Hi all, welcome to Tech Forum. In today's video, let us talk about the details on SSL Certificate Management. What is an SSL Certificate? The SSL Certificate like a special ID for websites. They make sure a website is safe. When you share private stuff like passwords or your card number on a website, the certificates keep it safe. It's really important for websites where you give personal info to have SSL certificate. It is what changes the website address from HTTP to HTTPS showing it's a secure website through a lock. If the SSL certificate is enabled for a website, the website can be accessed through HTTPS. Also the browser helps you to determine if a website has an SSL certificate by displaying a lock by the URL. This particular website is enabled with SSL. So you can see we are able to access the website through HTTPS protocol. Also the lock is displayed means the domain is protected, secure and enabled with SSL. So if you click on that, even you can see here connection is secure. You can find out the certificate details. The SSL certificates are issued by organizations known as certificate authorities means CAs. These CAs act as trusted validators, thoroughly checking the identity and legitimacy of individuals or organizations requesting for a certificate. There are various CAs like DigiCert and Komodo that provide these certificates. While most SSL certificates are paid, there are also free options available such as those from Let's Encrypt. Additionally, for those working on local testing environments, there are the option to create self-signed certificates. These are particularly useful for development and testing purposes. SSL certificates validation levels. SSL certificates come in three types. Domain validated means DV for basic security. Organization validation means OV for moderate security. And extended validation means EV for high security. The best choice depends on your website security needs. The DV SSL means domain validated SSL is best for personal project websites, blogs and it is the least expensive option. It requires the website owner to verify that the domain is registered to the domain owner. The domain validated SSL certificates validates the control of a domain, enables HTTPS and the padlock icon in browsers, also the certificates can be issued quickly because the certificate need only ownership verification. Also this organization and organization unit fields both display blank in the SSL certificate. Also in the certificate policy file, there is a specific object identifier value specific to this DB certificate. That's a 2.23.140.1.2.1. So there is a specific document from DigiCert. We can review the object identifier. Also the subject field only contains a common name CN value with the domain. For example, CN equal to the domain name. Example, albinsblog.com. Let us quickly review a sample SSL certificate that is enabled with DV, the domain validation. So if you see here, the padlock is still enabled. The website is accessed through HTTPS. Let me click on this padlock. The connection is secure. That's fine. If I go to the certificate details, the first one is the common name is there, but the organization and organization unit is blank. So then if I go to the details, so if you can see the subject, it only contains the domain name. So then if I go to the certificate policies, certificate policies, you can see OID, what are the number we were referring. So you can just copy this number. There is a document from DigiCert. So if you can go and search here under extension validation type DB. So this policy number is specified. That means the specific certificate is domain validated. So same way for OV and other certificate types, you can find the policy number. The OV SSL means organization validated SSL is best for business or non-profit websites and requires a higher verification level, making it more secure for the website. The SSL certificate issuer verifies the address and 
location of the owner organization validation validates the control of the domain enables https and the padlock image also authenticate the legitimacy of an organization adding a level of trust shows organization details in the certificate information also this can be issued in 1 to 3 days because it requires additional organization level validation the organization field display your organization name the subject field includes information about the organization location state and country in addition to the organization and common name the certificate policy field shows an oid value of oid 2.23.140.1.2.2 Let us quickly see a sample for OVSSL certificate. I am going to Adobe.com. You can see the padlock is enabled. HTTPS. Clicking on that. Connection is secure. Click on this. Details. So now you can see additional two common name. The organization name also displayed. Let me go to details. Now if we go to subject. So CN additional to CN. The organization name. The location. the state and country is also displayed so one more thing let me go to certificate policy so if you see here this is the oid number let me copy this oid number and go here so you can see it for this is for ov the organization validated ssl extended validation certificate validates control of the domain enables https and the padlock image authenticates the legitimacy of an organization adding a level of trust verifies the applicant has the right to request an ev ssl and is in good standing with the organization shows organization details in the certificate information the certificate will be issued in 1 to 5 days as this required additional verifications the organization field displays your organization's name The subject field includes details about the organization's location, state, and country, the organization and common name. Additionally, serial number, jurisdiction, state or province name, and jurisdiction country name. The certificate policy field shows an OID value of OID two dot two three dot one four zero dot one dot one. Let us see a sample on. EB validated SSL certificate. I am going to PayPal. dot com. The lock pad is enabled. HTTPS. If you click on that, you can see connection is secure. Click on certificate details. If you see common name is specified. Also organization name, organization unit. If you go to details, you can go into subject. So here CN organization location, state, country. Also serial number and business category jurisdiction state or province name jurisdiction country name is also specified now if i go to policy you can see here oid this number if i copy this specific number go here and search for this you can see this is related to ebssl validating the control of your domain before the certificate authority can issue an ssl certificate the certificate applicant needs to confirm their domain ownership rights to give the ssl certificate as a first step the domain should be validated by following the methods defined by the certificate authority there are multiple validation methods you should follow the appropriate way to prove the domain ownership these are the some of the commonly used validation methods verification through email means the registrar will send a email to the email specified on the who is record dns cname record you can add a specific cname record generated by the ca to the domain zone dns txt record validation you can add a specific txt record generated by the ca to the domain zone then http practical demonstration you can upload a specific validation file to your host this validation is not much used only used in a limited way Let us now see the types of SSL certificates. The first one is single domain. As the name suggests, this protects only single domain. The next one is wildcard SSL certificate. The wildcard SSL certificate secures a single domain and the corresponding subdomains. Example: star dot albinsblog dot com protect albinsblog dot com and also 
any subdomains like www.halbinsblog.com. Then the next one is multi-domain certificate. The certificate protect multiple domains. This certificate is also called as SAN certificate, subject alternative names certificate. The next one is multi-domain certificates. As the name suggests, this can protect multiple domains. This certificate is also called as SAN, means subject alternative name certificate. If you have an environment with multiple domains and subdomains need to be protected, so you can go with multi-domain certificates. The next one is multi-domain wildcard certificate. The multi-domain wildcard SSL certificate combines the features of both the multi-domain and the wildcard SSL certificate. It can have multiple domains. Also, the domains can be a wildcard entry. Let us now quickly see some samples for those certificate types. So I am going with albinsblog.com. If I click here, Secure, go here. So if you go to details, then keep coming down. You will be seeing certificate subject alternative names. If you go here, DNS name star.albinsblog.com, DNS name albinsblog.com. So for the single domain certificate, you will only see this entry, DNS name albinsblog.com. Uh, this is another example for wildcard certificate. So you can see star.albinsblog.com. So in this case, it has both, but Technically, single domain will have only um, DNS name, albinsblog.com or www.albinsblog.com, any one entry. For multi-domain SSL certificate, I will go with PayPal. So if you go to details and click on certificate subject alternative name, you can see multiple names are or domains are protected with this single certificate. For multi-domain wildcard certificate, I will go with Google. If you click again, secure this one details if you go to subject alternative names you can see star.google.com appengine.star.appengine.google.com you have multiple wildcard domains listed here let us talk about csr certificate signing request and private key the csr is a file containing website and domain information for ssl certificates certificate authorities use csr to issue ssl certificates for securing the website connections. CSRs include a public key and signature for identity ver verification. Private keys are essential for TLS certificates to work. Private keys are created when requesting a certificate using a CSR. Keep your private key confidential and accessible only to trusted administrators. CAs like Digiset or any CAs don't create or have access to your private key. The private key and SSL certificate are configured on the server for secure communication. Generating the private key and CSR. There are multiple approaches to creating the private key and CSR request. A simple way is through OpenSSL. Create a new configuration file with the name server.csr.cnf. You can specify the details here, the request, the default bits, 2048 then the algorithm uh, then also the additional details like country state location organization organizational unit and email address so this is the file will be used while generating the csr request now let me go to my command prompt i'm going to execute this command open ssl i'm going to specify request then the algorithm the csr file name then the, the size key size and also the private key file name, also the config file, server.csr.cnf. So if I go to my folder, I can see server.csr. This is the CSR file with encoded details. Now if I go to server.key, this is the private key file. So you should keep this secure. You should configure this file in your server to secure the communication. You can send this CSR file to your CA to generate the SSL certificate. So once the SSL certificate is generated and you received that, you can configure the SSL certificate along with private key into your server to protect the communication between the server and clients. In summary, SSL certificate is critical to support secure communication between your websites and the customer. There are different SSL types the selection should be based on the security level required for your website and the type of website you are trying to protect.
Thanks all for watching the video. See you all in next video.